There are a lot of feelings, experiences, and events in a person's life that prompts them to seek out magic, mysticism, spirituality. But a lot of it really comes down to the metaphor of where I'm sitting right now, in a graveyard where life and death meet. When we start contemplating, why was I brought into being? Who am I? What am I? What's it? What's my purpose within the great it? Fairy seership is an integrated practice. It's not transpersonal. It's not transcendent. It's not about putting something into you, but bringing something out. It's about taking the book that you are off the shelf of wisdom and opening it, looking at you as a human, an individual human, a human and an ancestral life carrying ancestral paradox and ancestral possibilities, a human in a natural world, a human a part of a species with a planetary destination and vision, and then lastly, the high spiritual piece, and that is who are we within the context of humanity, the natural world, the planet, and then the issuance of this world from the stars itself. I'm sitting here in this incredibly beautiful graveyard in Hollywood, California. And ultimately, rich or poor, this is where we all make it to. But what we do with that space in between becomes the content of our magic, content, the directive of our visions, uh, and prompting of our magic. So a graveyard is a perfect spot to start out in talking about this very seership uh, DVD series. Uh, and the contents, the guidances, the techniques, the lore uh, within it is part of an integrative practice which we call fairy seership. First, each one of us were issued, issued into existence by the ancestry that preceded us. We come on assignment. We come with intention. And it's up to us to esteem that intention, intention outward into action. But the first step is to begin to look at who we are and what are the voices in the blood within us that called us forth into being. It's good sometimes to go to a graveyard to start our work, to come into the graveyard a place of a meeting place between the living, the dead, the incarnate, the discarnate, and sort of anchor ourselves a little deeper in what the purpose is in the human species and then the purpose of ourselves within that species. Ultimately, we were all born to achieve one thing, to expand the knowing of the one, whatever that one is that created us. We were all given free will to, ex to be hand mirrors in the hand of destiny, reflecting upon itself and seeing what we can expand to. We were born to break the rules, to create new rules, to find new balances, or as Gene Roddenberry would say, to boldly go. But we first start with coming home to our flesh, coming home to our blood. So the first recommendation with this work is to first start looking at your ancestry. What are the ancestral paradoxes that you have within you? What are consistent knots in the sort of inner thread of your family? Uh, and to, to consciously choose to say the buck stops here with the paradox, to become a conscious redeemer, a solution bringer to your blood. There is no other entry into the place of the spirit world but through the ancestry, through the blood, and through the birth itself that brought you into being. A great deal of what prompts us to, to look into spirituality of any type, and right now especially because spirituality is taking on another level. It's going from a community shared thing to a real expression of who we are, why we are, and how to put that whyness, that vision into action. But we have a saying where I come from, you can't be a conjurer until death sets on your shoulders and informs you. The real meaning behind that is that we have a finite period. And we, if we listen to the fact that we have a finite period in this life, in this incarnation, we start to spend it like valuable currency. And we start to look in and say, why? If I'm the only one like me, I was intended. From there, we start to look deeper into the, the promptings of our ancestry. Not the promptings that lead us with greed or that lead us into battles, because most of those promptings are really about fear, about not having enough, and about living in a non-unified way of living. The core pain of humanity, as we know, 
And as we dig into when we start to heal ourselves in very seership and bring ourselves into the threefold life, meaning aligning our dream walkers, our ancestral selves, our surface walkers, our existent substance selves, incarnate body selves, and our, our star walkers, our eternal selves. As we start bringing those into being, we start freeing out what is the directive of my spirit? Why was I intended? And how do I conjure up and then implement that? So taking ourselves like that book off the shelf and beginning to read it, the first question of the three sacred questions we ask is, who am I? Well, you are the content of your elemental, natural, and blood ancestry. And it all starts first with blood. We first start with making friends with the family that we come from. Not necessarily approving of everything they say or everything they do, but knowing that we are an issuance out from the great river of blood, a pool of ancestral longing and knowing. And we must balance between the longing and the knowing. The knowing is the wisdom you carry in, that you'll refine, and that you'll give back to the pool. The longing is the paradox within your spirit that you came to heal. You're a doctor for a malady, and you're also a redeemer and a bringer of promise. It all starts when you resacredize your life first, and then your life in context. That's the first question, who am I? And then the next question is, what is, what is it? What is the great it? Centuries, cultures all over the world have battled over this. What this great it? Is it God? Is it goddess? But what is it? The foolish question to ever ask is, is there an it? And I say this because if we exist, and I'm assuming if you're watching this DVD, you exist, then something brought you into being. You didn't snap your fingers and suddenly come into creation. So you came from a pool of being. Now, walking around this wonderful stone circle here, these stones stand as sentinels unifying earth and sky and the underworld. So moving ourselves from the entombment of ignorance, from that stuck place that keeps us tied up in paradox. Let's move to this stone, who seems to be holding a wisdom place with this tree. The overall system of the fairy seership work centers in on a paradigm or a design, uh, a roadmap for spiritual work, which we call the tree of enchantment. First step is the ancestral work, doing ancestral paradox cleansing, and also claiming the sacred presence of your life in an ancestral context. Now, here we are before this ancient stone, this beautiful stone, who seems to be in partnership with this tree. Well, that is very much what Fairy Sears is about. Each one of us are born in a context. We're all like threads in a fabric, a greater fabric of our, our species, our planet, our universe. So the tree of enchantment is about the connections within me, the connections between myself, other people, and myself and other spirit beings, incarnate, discarnate, and non-carnate. The tree is best seen that there is a deep ancient organization and order to our lives and to everything, and dispersing, getting rid of the spell of forgetfulness that makes us go into a type of sleep and a type of fear-induced sleep that leaves us feeling alone, abandoned. So what is the second the sacred question, the what is it? There is no name for it. You come into a feeling, an encounter, moving from blind faith to informed faith to experience. Let's talk about some further steps in fairy seership. This first coming home to ourselves as incarnate beings of sacred purpose, of sacred intent. We were born with intent. We are born with purpose. We were not an accident. 